All right, everybody, warm welcome. So welcome to the new moon practice. Would you like putting in the chat? How are you feeling right now? Wonderful, <laughs> happy, content, great, lazy, okay. Intense and peaceful, that's nice. Awesome, sad, light, calm, hungry. <laughs> you haven't had dinner yet. Mm. Love, disturbed, excited, anxious, happy to see everyone. Yeah, great. Let's take a... Um, a minute just to tune in to this moment and ourselves. You can take a deep breath. So I'd like to um, so first of all, I don't have a fixed agenda of what I want to share, but there is something that's formulating in my mind. So I want to start with that. Um, that everything is happening uh, the way it's happening. You could also say it like everything is happening exactly the way it's meant to happen. That's one way of saying it. But maybe we don't know if what's meant to happen or not. So just everything is happening the way it's happening. A uh, simpler way of saying that is what is, is. A more poetic way of saying that is it takes the whole universe to grow a single grain of rice takes the whole universe to grow a single grain of rice. So in other words, it takes everything for anything to happen. There's a powerful chapter in the book, I Am That, where Nisargadatta Maharaj is refuting a very central idea in Indian philosophy, uh, karma. And Nisargadatta Maharaj says, no, there's no cause and effect. And like, what are you talking about? I mean, this is the central idea in Buddhist philosophy and Hindu philosophy. He's saying, well, uh, to say that one thing caused another thing is a very narrow way of thinking because it takes everything to cause anything. It takes everything to cause anything. Very fascinating. Can you really isolate and say, it's only this thing that's causing this? Like for example, I say, okay, I'm, out, I'm outside, it's a sunny day and I'm sweating. So I'm, su I'm sweating because it's a sunny day. No, but that's just one of the factors. There are many other factors. Sweating because I have a body. <laughs> sweating because I have sweat glands. I'm sweating because my sweat glands get activated at a certain temperature. Somebody else may not get activated at that temperature. You know, some people sweat easier and some people less easily. I'm sweating because my mother and father met. <laughs> sweating because I've been drinking water over the last few days. If I hadn't drunk water in the last one year, I don't think I would have sweated. <laughs> There'd be nothing to come out. <laughs> so this is just a fun example. Right? Uh, so it takes everything to create anything, which is a very fascinating way of thinking. 
And what I liked about the book, I am that uh, by Nithak Dad Maharaj, is not that he's trying to give you a new philosophy, because then there is another chapter where he talks about karma. Also. He talks about cause and effect also. So you say, "Arey, this chapter he's saying there's no, there's no karma. This chapter he's saying there is karma." And then you realize that he's not trying to give you a philosophy. He's trying to challenge the scaffolding on which you built your reality, the framework on which you have constructed your reality. He's shaking that entire framework. And that is disorienting. That is uh, not very pleasant when someone shakes that whole framework. But it's also quite liberating. So those of you who attended last time, uh, first of all, many people got very concerned that oh, I'm going to disappear and not be. I may disappear. You never know. But <laughs> right now. <laughs> The main thing is that uh, uh, it's just that I'll tell you what's shifted is that I'm not I'm not really keen to take people on any journey anymore, a journey from here to anywhere, right? So we can still discuss things and do things, and or we could even do practices and all, but we do it as an entertainment, not as something very serious that oh we have to get somewhere and we have to become better people or we have to improve or we have to transcend or something like that. And by the way, there's nothing wrong in even doing that. You're welcome to do that. That's a game that is quite juicy, actually. It's quite a quite a. But the problem with the game is that we start taking the game to be very real, and then we start comparing ourselves to others and how we should be and where we should be and how we should be, and then that creates a kind of a heaviness in us, or can create. So just play with this thought that. Everything is as it is, and uh, you are where you are, and things are the way they are. What is is. To me, what that does is it um, it kind of opens up something and. In a way, there's a kind of defocusing, defocusing from anything in particular, and therefore being able to take in a lot more, take in the whole experience. Otherwise, if you're like me, then you're trying to use some part of your experience to get to some other part of your experience. Trying to use some part of your experience. To get to some other part of your experience, right? Like a stepping stone. Imagining that that will finally satisfy me. I said defocus, and my camera got defocused. <laughs> camera is with me. So a session like this, where I'm not trying to take you on any journey, I'm not necessarily trying to give you any knowledge. I'm not necessarily trying to make you a better person. Um, I don't assume I, I know something that you don't. Can be quite frustrating at one level and can also be quite uh, tether, tether, different taste than what we are used to in our normal life. So, because notice how pretty much everything in schooling and college was all about learn this so that something happens. You learn this so you get marks, you learn this so you get a job, you learn this so you become a better person, you become better at something. So learning is always in, in you know, going towards something. But this is a kind of an agenda-less exploration where there's a nice word in the English language, meander, kind of meandering. Not really trying to get anywhere. Have you, have, have you had the experience of going to a new country or a new city 
and you don't necessarily want to do anything you're just meandering just walking around town walking around the village and taking in whatever is there one of my good friends uh, sunat he attended one of the first workshops which i called a joy shop must have been in 2006 or something 2006 or 2007 and uh, this was at a friend's house and there were about 30 people who came i was a monk at that time and in that two days two day joy shop one of the sessions i suddenly told them now leave everything behind leave all your bags and belongings behind and just walk out walk outside for two hours just walk walk anywhere uh, and just engage with the people around you or be, you can be quiet if you want you don't have to engage but uh, go with the spirit that we had in ancient india we had the spirit of a king who would once in a while take on a disguise and just go to see what's happening in my kingdom so the king doesn't need anything from anyone he's a king after all but he's going to just engage and just see what's going on in my kingdom or if you want to look at it from a spiritual perspective then go like uh, avatar you know avatar is a emissary of god so go, um, go avatar is already god but you just walk and see can i be of benefit to anybody or can i just connect with anybody can i just see what's going on so they were asked to take a two hour walk like this and go in any direction they could go alone they could go with somebody else they could talk or they could not talk so my friend sunu told me that uh, of all the things he had done with me those two hours were the most powerful for him and other people also shared their experiences someone went and found a bunch of little homeless kids homeless or at least very poor kids maybe they're not homeless very poor kids and uh, gave those kids ice cream kids were very happy somebody went to a shop and began talking to the shopkeeper and complimented his shop you keep your shop very clean and the whole shopkeeper's face lit up like oh thank you not many people notice <laughs> takes a lot of effort to keep this shop clean somebody went and sat under a big old banyan tree and began having interesting conversations with other people who came there and there's a nice word in hindi therav which doesn't have a proper translation in english there's a sense of spaciousness there's a sense of uh, you could say non restlessness not trying to get anywhere not trying to achieve anything not trying to teach anything not trying to impress anyone i think it's a it's the opposite of what we are told in the west you know hustle hustle come on come on you got to push you got to achieve time is money you know who are you meeting don't spend on waste your time meet the right people do the right thing climb up the ladder the imaginary ladder from which you jump off and land in loneliness <laughs> like it it is lonely at the top cuz i get a chance to uh, coach some you know very senior people and these are people who are so accomplished and they're kind of well known and they're rich and they're powerful and it's very lonely for them at the end of all that hustling you're sitting there quite lonely you don't know who to trust anymore very few people you can talk to and uh, so even that becomes a poison sometimes after you have it all then there's a sense of what what is it for what is it for so anyway so those people had terra and they went for this uh, two hour walk and almost everyone came back it's a, i don't know if there's a word for it there might be a word for it but i don't really know what it is but they came back with a kind of special glow on their face maybe some language has a word for this like they had been infused with spirit type it out to the thing radiant how huh? you could say radiant so the kind of radiance on their face glow on their face the word inspired Uh, i think it means to be infused with spirit to be infused with spirit so there was a kind of an inspiration there 
So you don't have to wait for the workshop to do this. You know, you could sometime tomorrow just take a avatar walk or a king in disguise kind of walk. Just walk, and outwardly you're the same person, but inwardly something is different. Because normally when we walk, we're trying to get somewhere. You have to buy something, you have to do something, you have to get something done, you have to pay some bills, meet someone, you got to there's a business meeting, there's something, or even if you're walking for exercise. walk lose weight <laughs> but to walk just to walk and just to connect that is a very different energy to it and i think this can be if you double click on this it can open up into a different way of living doesn't just have to be a one or two hour experience it's a way of living that we don't often hear about so in a way we are seeing with new eyes and we are hearing with new ears not the not the calculating eyes not the calculating ears opening yourself up so it's new moon today and uh, that's that's the energy of the new moon isn't it? it's newness and newness actually could we use the word stand still yeah why not newness also implies because new moon actually you can't see the moon for a long time i was confused between full moon and new moon i said which one is which one is the one you can see and which one is the one you can't see So it turns out the one you can't see is called the new moon. New moon. The way to remember it is new moon is no moon. <laughs> I mean, there is a moon, but you can't see it. So, no moon. So in a way, that newness implies emptiness. That newness implies emptying yourself of everything you think you know, at least temporarily. one thing i benefited from was the recognition that the earth has an elliptical orbit what does it mean elliptical orbit it's not a perfect circle it's more like an oval so why is that beneficial because when the earth comes closer to the sun it speeds up when the earth goes further away from the sun it slows down so it's not moving at a uniform rate around the sun it's an elliptical orbit so then this was very meaningful for me why for the earth itself speeds up and slows down so you are also allowed to speed up and slow down <laughs> so like i used to judge myself for not being that consistent why sometimes i'm so energetic sometimes i'm not sometimes i have uh, you know i i really want to read and learn a lot sometimes i don't feel like reading anything so the cycles you know if the earth can have cycles of speeding up and slowing down this season and that season i am also allowed to have cycles everything has cycles and at different stages of our life different cycles different rhythms it's a simple thing but quite 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 profound and again two contradictory messages one is no mistakes in the universe no mistakes in the universe in fact byron kitty when she heard the word namaste she heard the word no mistake so no mistakes no mistakes <laughs> no mistakes try that tomorrow anyone someone says namaste namaste you say no mistake <laughs> nice been so no mistakes so one teaching is no mistakes and the other beautiful teaching from dogen zenji zen master he says the life of a zen master is one continuous mistake 
the life of a Zen master is one continuous mistake. But this continuous, is very, it's very powerful, continuous. You know, I don't know if you know this, but when a plane is flying, at some point the pilots, did you know that pilots are mostly needed for takeoff and landing? In between, they just put on the autopilot. Then they're chatting <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> so pilots actually are not needed for most, and even, even takeoff and landing can sometimes happen with autopilot. But usually the takeoff and landing bit is where the pilots are needed mostly. Even during the flight, it's all autopilot. So autopilot is what? The computer decides how the plane has to fly, altitude. I mean, I'm sure they set all that altitude and speed and everything. So the, the fascinating thing is that the auto, plane on autopilot is off course 99.9% .9 of the time. But it reaches its destination 100% of the time. How is that possible? What does it mean it's off course? Because it is going a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, 99.9% .9 of the time. But because it's a continuous correction, it reaches the destination 100% of the time. So the life of a Zen master is one continuous mistake. In other words, you will miss the mark again and again and again. But noticing that you're missing the mark again and again and again, you will reliably come home 100% of the time. Very fascinating. So we have two contradictory messages. On one hand, we say, no mistakes. And on the other hand, we say, nothing but mistakes. Everything you do misses the mark. Like Shinzen Yang, a wonderful teacher, he says in one of his books, Science of Enlightenment, he says, uh, do not teach. You're talking about meditation, spirituality. He said, do not teach would be a mistake. To teach will also be a mistake. <laughs> Why are they both a mistake? See, to not teach, you know something valuable, you're not teaching it, that's a mistake. But to teach, you're assuming you know what's best for the other person. How many times you've had to unlearn things? I certainly have, I don't know about you. How many times in your life you thought you learned something very valuable, only to then have to unlearn it, which sometimes is harder. So Shinzen Yang says to not teach is a mistake, to teach is also a mistake. Now, which mistake are you going to commit? So commit the mistake, commit the mistake. And uh, one thing I also I learned is that anything you do with full responsibility is not a problem. So you know it's a mistake, which is it? I take full responsibility for misleading people. <laughs> What's that nice quote that the fool who persists in his folly, the fool who persists in his folly. What's the exact quote? Let me find it. Long term. Persists in his folly becomes wise, I think. The fool in his, yeah, the fool who persists in his folly, William Blake, the fool, fool who persists in his folly will become wise. The fool who persists in his folly will become wise. <laughs> there is the story of uh, Bahia. Bahia was a sailor, I think. So Bahia is a sailor living his life. Then one day his ship gets wrecked. So he swims. And in the process of swimming, he loses all his clothes. He somehow makes it to land. And people see this man with no clothes and they assume he's some kind of a holy person. So they feed him and they give him a nice place to stay. So he's very impressed that um, earlier I had to work very hard to get all of this. Now they're just giving it. <laughs> so Bahia decides this is a good way of living. <laughs> So Bahia then is mostly naked or he will use um, 
bark from the tree you know so the tree bark he will wrap his body with tree bark and he lives like this so people think he is very wise and after a while he forget that he was ever a sailor he also starts believing he is very wise he thinks he is very liberated very wise <laughs> Oh, like confirmation bias. <laughs> When everybody thinks the same way, you think, "Yeah, this is true." So, uh, at some point, he starts believing that he's enlightened, and uh, then one of his relatives, who is a deva, devata, he has pity on this fellow and says, "You foolish fellow, you're not enlightened. You're far from enlightened." But there is a Buddha. and he's an enlightened one maybe he can help you you better go and learn from him. so luckily bahia has enough um, enough humility to listen to this and say okay maybe it's true so he walks from what is currently maharashtra bombay that area he walks all the way to what is probably bihar uttar pradesh that area i imagine how long that will take to walk it'll take like a few months so he walks and he goes to the um, the vihar the word bihar comes from vihar So Buddha Vihar, or other kinds of Vihars. So he goes there and he asks for the Buddha. They said he's out on arms round. He's uh, collecting food. Which direction? That direction. So he goes running in that direction. Buddha is outside. He's collecting food, arms round, walking silently. Other monks are with him, and he interrupts the Buddha and says, "Give me the teachings." And the Buddha says, "Right now, Bahia, we are on. We are among the householders. We are collecting food. This is not the right time. Give me the teachings now." there is no guarantee how long i live there is no guarantee how long you live give me the teaching now and the buddha for a second time says but bahi we are out among the householders this is not the right time meet us back in the vihara we teach give me the teaching now three times he insists and the buddha said why is this guy insisting so much so then the buddha checks so it's almost like you know we have our phone but we don't check it all the time i know some of us check it all the time but it's like it's next to us <laughs> so you got to look at the phone and say okay what is the time or what messages come so the same way the buddha has to check a little bit okay what is it so it's very interesting that he has access to it but he's not checking it all the time so yet he checks it's oh my god this guy is going to die in 15 minutes he's about to die he's on his last few breaths did you know that in india the yogic systems they believe your life is not counted in years it's counted in breaths so you're you've come into this world with a fixed number of breaths so if you breathe slower deeper you will live a little bit longer that doesn't mean you're taking long deep drags on a cigarette that will not that will <laughs> that will reduce a bit <laughs> anyway so buddha saw that this he is about to die bahia is about to die so he gives bahia very short teaching he says bahia train yourself in this way in the scene there is only the scene in the herd there is only the herd in the smelt there is only the smelt in the tasted there is only the tasted in the felt there is only the felt in the cognize there is only the cognize i should i should give you the exact word actually very beautiful give me a second yes sir bahia sutta Yeah, my screen. You know, so. Okay. Ah, yes, sir. So we're down to this. All I told you most of the story. Now we are here. So here in Bahia, you should train yourself thus. In the seen will merely be what is seen. In the heard will merely be what is heard. In the sensed will merely be what is sensed. In the cognized will merely be what is cognized. In this way, you should train yourself, Bahia. when bahia for you 
in the seen is merely what is seen in the heard is merely what is heard in the sensed is merely what is sensed in the cognized is merely what is cognized then by here you will not be with that what does it mean you're not with that with that is i am here the experience is there i am here seeing is there see that is what with that i am with you right i am here hearing is there i am here feeling is here no when there is just seeing when there is just hearing when there is just feeling when there is just sensing when there is just cognizing then there is no being with anything then bahia you will not be with that when bahia you are not with that then bahia you will not be in that so you're not in that you're not with that and when bahia you're not in that then bahia you will neither be here nor beyond nor in between the two just this is the end of suffering so this is uh, another way of saying that right where there is suffering right there is the ending of suffering this is a magnificent puzzle that we all have to solve in this lifetime actually if we don't solve it we ourselves get dissolved <laughs> it's not the puzzle that gets solved our sense of self gets dissolved it's the opposite it's like raman maharshi says when you ask the question who am i it's not to find an answer most questions you find an answer but this question we will not find an answer who am i is that kind of a puzzling question it's not designed for you to find an answer it's designed to dissolve the questioner designed to dissolve the question so when bahia for you in the seen is just the seen in the cognized is just the cognized then bahia you will not be with that when bahia you are not with that then bahia you will not be in that when by here you are not in that then by here you will neither be here nor beyond nor in between the two neither here nor beyond nor in between the two neither here means neither will you be human nor will you be beyond human beyond this world it's not about embodiment it's not about transcendence it's not about something in between just this is the end of suffering another way of saying this is no place to stand anything you say about yourself you've already missed the mark you've already missed the point i knew a lady in delhi she was she'd been meditating for a very many 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 years and anything she'd say to me then she'd say oh but that's not exactly it <laughs> and she said i'm feeling that she said oh but that's not exactly it i found it very fascinating she kept saying that oh but the moment i've said it it's not exactly it i found it fascinating how she kept noticing that her words were always missing the mark or they're missing the mark like that's not exactly it not exactly it now through this brief dharma teaching of the of the lord the mind of bahia or the bark cloth was immediately freed from the taints without grasping and the lord having instructed bahia with his brief instruction went away not long after the the lord's departure the buddha's departure a cow with a young calf attacked bahia of the bark cloth and killed him it seems that in these days just like people die from being run over by cars in those days they used to die by being run over by cows it's a very common occurrence in the scriptures it happens all the time that you just turn away and this guy's plum cow is knocked over this person finished so in those days being knocked over by cows was a very common way of dying so mr bahia has gone he's been knocked over by cow when the lord having walked for arms food and savatthi was returning from the arms round with a number of bhikkhus on departing from the town he saw that bahia of the bark cloth had died seeing this he said to the bhikkhus bhikkhus take bahia's body put it on a litter carry it away burn it make a stupa for it your companion in the holy life has died now this is fascinating he is not become a monk he is not become a monk he is wearing his funny bark clothes bark wood bark cloth bark wood and the buddha is saying your companion in the holy life has died because the companion is not made by this and that ritual it's made by, made by emancipation so he his mind was freed his heart was freed 
Freed from what? From the basic delusion that I am separate from life. This is the basic delusion. That there is life and there is me. There is ice and there is water. Oh, really? There is ice and there is water. Look more carefully. It's just water. No ice and water. That ice is also made of water only. So what we are calling I is made of the same material that this life is made of. Us. But we may not have grasped that yet. So it still assumes, it still appears that there's an I sitting over here that's deciding what to do, what not to do. And that is the basic, that's the root delusion. And that is what's going to spin us from one life to the other life to the other life. It's going to keep on spinning us until we see through that. Very well revered, sir, those bhikkhus replied to the Lord. Taking Bahia's body, they put it on a litter, carried it away, burnt it, made a stupa for it. Then they went to the Lord, prostrated themselves, sat to his side. Sitting there, those bhikkhus said to the Lord, Bahia's body has been burnt, revered, revered sir. And a stupa has been made for it. What is his destiny? What is his future birth? Bhikkhus, Bahia's are the bark cloth of the wise man. He practiced according to the Dhamma. Dhamma is the Pali word for Dharma. And did not trouble me by disputing about Dhamma. It's like the Buddha telling the monks, all of you people, people keep troubling me. Look, he didn't trouble me. I just told him he practiced and he was done. <laughs> he did not trouble me by disputing about the Dhamma. Because Bahi of the bark cloth has attained final Nibbana. So in those 15, 20 minutes, he was done. What had to be done, it's done. Then on realizing its significance, the Lord uttered on that occasion, this inspired utterance. These are called Udana. There's a nice word in Pali, Udana. So this actually comes in the book, Udana. Where near water, nor earth, nor fire, nor air, gain a foothold. Where gleam no stars, no sun shed light. There shines no moon, yet there is no darkness. When a sage, a Brahman, has come to know this for himself through his own wisdom, he is freed from form and formless, from pleasure and from pain. This inspired utterance was spoken by the Buddha. So did I hear. So did I hear means it's an oral tradition. Evang me sutan, thus have I heard. This was passed on from disciple to disciple by oral tradition, thus have I heard. So this is the teaching. This is the brief, one of the briefest teachings the Buddha gives. In the scene, let there just be the scene. In the herd, let there just be the herd. In the sense, just the sense. In the cognize, just the cognize. What happens when that happens? Then you're not with that. And then you're not in that. And when you're not with that and you're not in that, then you're neither here nor beyond, nor in between. And just this is the end of suffering. When those people went on that walk, in a way, they were just seeing, they were just hearing. There was not too much mental calculation going on. So they got quenched at some level, they got quenched. And they came back with a radiance, a very beautiful radiance. Not from having done something spectacular. Some people did things, some people didn't do anything. But they came back, in a way they came back unburdened. They came back light and clear.
If you like, you can take a deep breath. Yeah, so it's uh, reading that sutta was uh, created a kind of silence within my mind. And it's not that I didn't have thoughts, but no thought was powerful enough to become words. So just sat there. Um, the silence is louder than the thoughts. Yep, I guess that's all I have to say. Would anyone like to share something or ask something? I actually had an occasion um, sometime last year, one of the uh, one of the people whose home I'd go to meditate when I was in college. Uh, she was quite ill and uh, her son called me to say that she's probably gonna die soon. So I spoke to her on the phone she had advanced cancer and uh, probably had just hours of a day or two to live. So I reminded her of the same teaching. In the scene, let there just be the scene. In the herd, let there just be the herd. Smell, taste, touch, thought. So it's really powerful teaching for us to, to remember. She died a very inspiring death, very, very calm, very clear, not, uh, no drama, very smooth, very clean. Good example of how the way you live says a lot about the way you die. And the way you die says a lot about how you've lived. Repeat the thought about life, time, and breath. This is a yogic idea that your lifespan is not measured in days and months and years. It's measured in number of breaths. So we come into this world with a certain quota of breaths. So once that quota is done, then your life is done. We don't know what that is. But the idea is if you like if you were very attached to life, then you would make an effort to slow down your breath. <laughs> then you will actually live a little longer. That's the, that's the concept.
I think there are uh, some of us for whom this is probably going to be the last life. So, don't be as captivated by worldly values. What the whole world says is important, is valuable, should be done. May not apply to you. So even if you feel a little strange or, oh, I should be doing more of this and less of that. That's what everybody is doing. But if it's not coming naturally, it just doesn't apply to you. It doesn't matter. People say, oh, you're not being practical or come on, you should do more or this or that. That's not for you. And whatever momentum there is in this life, it'll, it'll happen. But there won't be enough. And you may still have likes and dislikes. And you may have a bit of a personality. You may have a bit of an ego. But probably not enough to take another womb. Probably not enough to push you into a whole other life. So just let it, let it extinguish itself, whatever remaining momentum it has. But not enough momentum to send you chasing after another birth. On the other hand, if you are wanting journey after journey after journey, and the, the code word in there is wanting. Why are you wanting? Because you're discontent. You're discontented, so you're wanting something or the other, even spiritual journey. Then the long, I'll keep spinning. <laughs> Have you noticed that no matter how fast the wheel is spinning, the center of the wheel is completely still. The absolute center, completely still. So the more you are at the periphery, the more movement there is. And the more you are at the center, the less movement there is. Come to, in fact, when Sufis whirl, and you've seen Sufi dervishes, they whirl. The reason they whirl is to find the stillness, the still point. In the right, in the middle of them, what's the middle of all this movement where there's stillness? So Sufis whirl to find the still point. And meditators sit still to discover the dance. Hmm. In our community, when someone dies, the consolation is that they're done with breaths. Yeah, that's right. The number of breaths is done. Yeah, so I invite you to um, two, two ways to go through life, ball of glue and ball of wool. Ball of glue is you keep accumulating more and more and more impressions, ideas, beliefs, expectations, desires. Keep picking up more and more and more. It gets bigger and bigger, and bigger, heavier and heavier and heavier. And ball of wool is keeps on getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So whatever happens, it just uh, unburdens you a little bit more, empties you a little bit more, a little bit lighter. So you have to see which one's attracting you. Ball of glue or ball of wood. If not right or wrong, both are valid. Just a different experience. All right, are we feeling complete? If anybody wants to say something, ask something. Not no comments on YouTube.
गुड सब लोग शांत हो गए आज अच्छी बात नित्य शांत Okay, so I want to say something. Uh, one, it is so good to see you back. <laughs> Second, <laughs> you know, uh, today uh, I joined in between, but the, when you were sitting silently for such a long time, that silence was so fulfilling. Now, I mean, it was so soulful. It, the energy in the group, everybody was silent, and I was just seeing all of them quietly sitting and sitting with you. I think the exchange of energies was so powerful at that time, and. Uh, Yes, uh, like you said, that some of us will go reach home this time. Uh, yes, we will definitely because it seems like uh, you know earlier I always used to say that what's the spice you know in finding the moksha or all those kind of nirvana. It's a good thing to play game, come back, have you know meet people of your clan and uh, but now the there's a twist here and uh, now I see the flip side and I see that. uh we need to go back home now so yes i am determined ki this time <laughs> good yeah and thank you for everything beautiful thank you for sharing that yeah. no. can we do a mayur mari let's do a mayur mari karte hain hand up nice bit hot multiply by infinity twice my you all right thank you everybody you used to share a list of books would you recommend is there any updated list or for what book do you want to read uh how about you make the intention that the right book comes to you i would say that more than depending on me make the intention the right book comes to you and typically that's how it works the right book will find you good take rest everyone